Hi everybody! Today I want to show you some tools and resources that you need if you want to write Revit plugins with PyRevit. We'll start with PyRevit developer's documentation. It has a lot of different features that we can access to write our scripts easier. Then we will look in Revit API documentation and see how can we use it. And finally, we'll look behind the scenes in Revit to see all available methods and properties of your elements that we could use in our scripts directly in Revit. And instead of just showing you all of these resources and tools, we'll create a simple tool together to get an idea how to use them. You'll learn how to pick an element and display its information. Learning by doing is the best, so I will also have a little task for you in the end of this video. Let's go to Revit and start. Oh. This is a very simple file I have right here, just a cutout from one of the projects. Let's head over to EF Tutor tab, and as you can see, I have reorganized all the tools and added a bunch of different ones, so it's actually looking nicer. And I have prepared an empty button right here for today's lesson, Element Information. If you hover over this tool, hold Alt and click on it, it's gonna open a folder where it's located. Now I can open the script, and as you can see, it's a very simple script. It just has a button's name and description right here, then it has our regular Autodesk Revit DB import, and our most used variables and just a print statement right here which means that if i'm gonna click on this button everything it's gonna do is just report hello world in the console if you don't know anything about pyrevit script anatomy i have another video where you can learn more about it link will be in the top right corner so now first of all let's create steps that i want to do in this video i want to show you how can you pick an element inside of revit then we're gonna use different resources and tools and try to get as much information as possible from it and then we're gonna print in the console so let's start with PyRevit developer's documentation. Let me bring it on the screen. Let's have a look. In here you can see there are a few get started guides that can show you step by step how to do different things. For example, you can look how to create your first command in PyRevit. It has a bunch of explanation and different code snippets that you can follow to create a tool. Then there are different tutorials made by Essen, the creator of PyRevit. Down below there are references. From here we can get a lot of different information. Also, this is a very helpful resource for beginners, effective input. If I come here, first of all, there's a content of all the different snippets we're gonna find below. And if I click on something like select views, it's gonna take me to this snippet. There are snippets of code on the left side, and there is a screenshot of the form you can get on the right side. Actually, let's copy it to our script to show you how it works. I'm gonna mark it as bonus, read input, and I'm gonna paste this form right here. First of all, we make an import from PyRevit. I'm gonna move it up, and then there is this very simple snippet, one line to select your views. This is highlighted in red because I don't have this function in my PyCharm. So I'm going to replace it by just printing selected views. And let's go to Revit and run the tool. So click on this button. Give us this form to select our views. I'm going to select these two. Click on select. And it returns us a list of our selected views. And we didn't even need to write any code yet. We just wrote a print statement to show it right here. So PyRevit simplifies a lot of different things for us when we make our tools with Python. Let's close it. I'm gonna go back and comment it out. This is just for you to show how much value can you get from PyRevit documentation. So now let's focus on picking our elements. I know for a fact that we can import from PyRevit, Revit module, and there is a function that we can use for picking our elements. I'm gonna define element variable, and I'm gonna type Revit dot pick and then you can see it gives me a bunch of different autocomplete options i can pick element elements category and so on i want to use this one and we can move this up right here instead of having two lines let's combine it in single line you might have noticed that i had autocomplete for pyrevit functions and therefore pycharm suggested us different functions i get asked about this quite often so i'm going to show you right now how to do this this is similar to how we did our revit api autocomplete i had to go to interpreter show all and at these paths, we had to add a path to PyRevit library folder. In my case, this is right here. To easily find it on your computer, open your file explorer and right here type percentage sign app data percentage sign. Click enter. This is a Windows shortcut to access this app data roaming folder. And this is also a default place where PyRevit is installed. If you look here for PyRevit masters folder, and then inside there is this PyRevit library folder. We can copy this path and then we would simply add it with the plus sign. I already have it, so I'm just gonna cancel it. And then when you're gonna use any of the PyRevit modules, it's gonna help you and show you what's possible. Also in PyCharm, we can see where was declared different objects. For example, if I'm gonna use doc and I wanna know where was it used, I can use Ctrl plus B shortcut to show where this object was declared. For example, in doc, I can select it like this, on hold Ctrl and click on B, and you can see that line jumped right here. This is where it was declared. We can also do this for different objects that are coming from other files, as long as PyCharm knows where they're coming from. And if you have done autocomplete for PyRevit with referencing the folder, then it's gonna work. I'm just gonna select this function, hold Ctrl, click B, and you can see it opened me selection.py. 
This comes somewhere from PyRavid folders. And in here there is this pick element function. There's also pick element by category and so on. You can learn quite a lot by just exploring what's inside of PyRavid. Since PyRavid is open source, we have access to all the code behind it. So let's come back to our script. I'm gonna remove this. I'm just gonna name it PyCharm shortcut. I'm gonna put it all the way down. Let's continue on our code. Whenever you're picking any elements, it's good to know what kind of type of element you are picking. So I'm gonna get element type equals type element. Let's align it nicely here. And then let's print both of them just as a proof that we have selected something. Okay, now go to Revit and click on this. As you can see, many things in my Revit has grayed out as soon as I click on the button. It means that we have activated picking mode. I'm gonna select this wall right here. And it printed me here that we got wall object and then it's a type of a wall. And again, notice that we just wrote a few lines of code and we already have a nice functionality because PyRevit provides us these pre-made features. So I'm gonna close it. One thing is that when I click on it, it's not very clear what should I do and it's not even clear that something happening. Let's fix that. Then let's go back to PyRevit documentation. In this effective input, I know that there is somewhere a warning bar that we can use for this. And it's right here. This is how it's gonna look and this is the code that we need to copy. I'm gonna copy. I'm to PyCharm, I'm gonna paste it on the top. Copied something wrong, do it again, copy, and then we paste it. We don't need this import line because we are importing it right here on the top. Same as before, we need to replace our do stuff. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this line inside of this context manager, and then anything that's happening under this with forms warning bar is going to have this orange header with a text. Let's write pick an element. Let's go back to Revit, click on the button. This time it's very clear that we have to pick an element. Click on that one, works the same. So by now you know how to select elements and how to find different useful features from PyRevit. But what can we do with actual Revit API elements? Let's try to get more information about our walls. Open RevitAPIDocs.com. This is an online Revit API documentation made by GUI Tolerico, so it's easier to access. Right here in the top, select your Revit version, and then in here you have different namespaces. Most used one is gonna be this DB. This is where all our Revit elements coming, like areas, walls, floors, and so on. I'm going to use the search bar on the top and I'm just going to type wall. I'm interested in the wall class, click on it. It says right here that it represents a wall in Autodesk Revit. Also, all of these classes, they are pull down menus. So if I'm going to click, you can see that it opens wall members, wall methods and wall properties. I can click on them and it gives me more information about what's going on inside of our walls. Properties are just internal variables that object has. For example, walls in Revit can have different properties like category, element ID, and there's level ID, location, we can get our curve from here. There's wall type, width, and so on. And different classes have different properties. Then there are methods. These are more like actions. For example, we can see that we can change our type ID, we can create a new wall, we can flip it, and so on. All of them are hyperlinks, which means that they can lead us to another class. I'm gonna go to this create method of the wall. It was right here that it creates a new rectangle or profile wall within the project using specified wall type, height and offset. Here we have some syntax examples. It was gonna be in C Sharp and some other languages but not in Python, because Python is not supported by Autodesk officially. But it's not an issue, because we can get all the information from this snippet. We know that we need to use the create method and we need to provide all these arguments. And on top of that, it also specifies which type of element it has to be provided. If you're not sure about any of the classes here, you can click on them and it's gonna take you to this class. We can read more about it and try to understand how to work with it. Let's go back to walls. And lastly, there are members. Members just combine what every class has. For example, in this case, you can see a list of the same methods and then a list of properties. Let's actually try to get some information about it. I'm gonna come here and we're gonna get some information. It's gonna be element.category as we saw it right here. To access the property, we just need to place a dot and then write the name of the property. So element ID is going to be element ID. Level ID is equals to element level ID. Element wall type equals element wall type and so on. Let me organize it a little nicer. And now we can also print all this information in the console. To do this, I'm just going to select all of this and I'm going to type print element something equals and I'm going to put this curly brackets and then I can make a format on my string. Now let's write element category then element ID, element level ID, I'm gonna convert it to a level in a second, then element wall type and element width. Actually these two are only for the wall elements. And now let's go to Revit and try to print it. I'm gonna click on element information tool and I'm gonna select one of the walls. Here are all of our text and these two will also get different classes. This is a category and this is a wall type. But instead, I would like to have the name of the category and the wall type. Let's have a look. What we can do, we can select our wall. 
If I go to Add-ins tab, right here I have installed Revit Lookup plugin. This is the most used plugin when you create your own tools with Revit API. As we can use this Snoop Current selection, you're gonna use this a lot, so I would highly recommend you making a shortcut. Click on it. So this tool allows us to look behind the curtains in Revit and, and see all the properties and methods available for all of our elements. Since I clicked only on Snoop My Current Selection, I have my single wall that I selected. So in here we can see a lot of different hidden features hidden from regular users. And here everything I can do with it. There are different properties right here, then there are a bunch of methods, and there are the special properties of the wall and methods of the wall. Pay attention to the bold ones, because they're gonna return us something, either an element or list of elements. As you have seen earlier, we selected the category property, but it returns us this complicated Revit object. And now I'm snooping category instead of my wall. I'm gonna make it a little bigger. And it also has different properties. And right here I can see, for example, there is a property called name. If you want to, you can go to Revit API doc. Let's put it side by side. Look for category class right here and open its properties. Get a little bigger. And you can see that this is pretty much the same thing, but in here it tells you more about how to use different features. And in here you can learn more about actual case and what it's gonna return. In this, it's gonna return me the name of the wall. Let's get this property. Since this returns as a category, we can just get its name like this. Then I'm quite happy with the element ID that we're getting. Then there is a element level ID, which gave us this bunch of numbers. So instead, I wanna get my actual level and then I get a name of the level. To do this, let's go to Revit API docs and I'll search for get element method. And you can see it gives us right here the first one. Gets an element reference by input element ID. But since this is a method, we need to know from which class it's coming from. I'm gonna scroll up, and I can see that it's coming from document class. That means that I need a document instance to apply this method to. Let's go right here. We're gonna say level equals doc. Then we're gonna write get element method. And if you look here, we need to provide its element ID. This is exactly what we're getting in this line on the top. We're gonna provide it here. I'm gonna remove this. And then we're going to get our level's name. Element level name equals element level dot name. In my case, I'm gonna combine all these lines together because I'm not gonna use it anywhere else. So instead of referencing this variable, I'm just gonna make it straight right here. And then I'm not gonna create this variable, but instead I'm gonna reference this variable here and get its name. Let's go back to Revit. We can close all of this for now. We need to go back to EFTutor tab, click on our tool, then click on one of the walls and it gives me an error. It says that category object doesn't have attribute bane, which means that I misspelled something. Let's come back here. Replace it with a name, you can run it again, click on your wall. Now it tells us that element category is walls, element ID is this number, then element level is egg dog, and so on. Just gonna ignore wall type for now. Let's remove these two print statements we have in the beginning. But now what's gonna happen if I'm gonna select something else but not a wall? Like for example the floor or furniture. It's gonna crash and say that floor doesn't have an attribute of wall type. So to make it fail-proof, there are different methods that we can do. First of all, we could limit our selection to only walls. Instead, what we can do, come here, and we already know the element type, so we can make just a simple if statement. If element type not equals to wall type, then I'm gonna print, it was supposed to pick a wall. And then we're gonna exit our script. I need to import my sys module, port it right here. This function is gonna terminate any running script which is run from, as you can see right here. Also, if you wanna get this help dialogs, you can use Ctrl Q in PyCharm. If you click it double, it's gonna open it as a separate window where often you can learn more about it. Let's move it down where we placed our previous shortcut. This one is gonna read doc string of our elements, and this is gonna show where it was declared. So let's try to select the floor again. Now it just tells us here that you were supposed to pick a wall. But this dialog box is not really good for displaying errors like this. So instead, we're gonna go back to PyRavid docs, and in this effective input, we're gonna look for alerts. There are different kinds of alerts, we can add different buttons depending on what we're providing. I'm interested in the simplest form like this. You already know that we don't need this import, we don't need those stuff, all we need is this. Let's copy paste it, then I'm gonna replace its text with my text, and we don't need this anymore because this function comes with this functionality. Notice that there's a parameter called exit script, and we can sell, set it to true or false, depending on what we're doing. So let's go back to Revit, click on element information, select any object, and now I get this nice UI saying you were supposed to pick a wall and we only can exit from it. That was it. I hope you understood how to use PyRevit and Revit API documentation. I learned about Revit lookup tool that we'll be using every time we create our tools. To really learn Python and Revit API, you need to practice it. I have a little task for you to try. 
Choose any other category and try to get as much information as possible using properties and methods. Don't try to get parameter values yet. I'll have another video about getting it because it involves a few extra steps. Also, go through PyRevit documentation and look at get started guides. They might be very helpful if you're just starting. Thank you everybody for watching. Like this video if you found it valuable and I want to thank all my patrons and supporters that you can see right here. And you can add your own name to this list by signing up on my Patreon page. Happy coding everyone. Goodbye.